Hi, I'm Michelle Shelfont, psychotherapist, holistic life coach, and human, just like you, learning to navigate life's challenges. With over 25 years experience, I teach people how to get healthy using the adult chair model. The adult chair model is where simple psychology meets grounded spirituality, and it teaches us how to become healthy adults. From anxiety and depression to codependency and relationship issues, you can use the adult chair for just about anything. Each week, I share practical tips, tools, and advice from myself and a wide range of experts on how to get unstuck, how to live authentically, and how to truly love yourself all while sitting in your adult chair. Welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. I am Michelle Shelfont, delighted to be here with you, as always, with a very special guest today. We have Teresa Steigner on the show, and we are talking all about a very important topic that each and every one of you, and I mean every single one of you, needs to be paying attention to during this season. Honestly, all year, but let's talk about specifically this season that is self-care. And I'm telling you up front right now, it's more than a bubble bath and a massage. We are talking therapeutic self-care. And it's something that you can do for free every single day. And it takes seconds, if not minutes a day, and it will change your holidays. Meaning there will be less stress, less overwhelm, and more present moments and more joy and peace. Who doesn't want that? So Teresa is going to give us the lowdown on how we do all of that. I just want to say, first of all, that we have the Adult Chair Coaching Certification Program launching just in a matter of days. So my friends, you are going to want to go ahead and get on that wait list because then you'll be the first to know when our coaching certification program goes live. So head on over to the adultchair.com forward slash certification, and you'll be notified as soon as the program is ready and goes live. All right. Okay. So we're going to jump into self-care, but let me tell you a little bit about Teresa Steigner. She is a woman on a mission. She is here to help other women find peace, direction, and healing. As a certified adult chair master coach, yogi, and Reiki healer, she provides a safe, judgment-free space to help her clients recalibrate to calm. Her 30-plus year corporate career background, managing teams, and implementing strategic transformation is a huge part of who she is, and she brings this wealth of leadership development knowledge into her health and wellness coaching practice. Through individual coaching, yoga classes, and self-care workshops and retreats, the women that she coaches learn how to incorporate a self-care mindset and align emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually with their highest potential. Who does not need that? <laughs> Welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast, Teresa Steigner. Michelle, thank you and so thrilled to be here with you today. Yeah, I am, you know, you've you've known me for a very long time and and you know how much I love to talk about self-care and that's why I said Teresa's the self-care master, like this is your thing and I said I really would like to have you on to really share with the audience how we can get better at self-care to really understand mm-hmm. what it is because again like I said before it's more than a bubble bath, right? It right. is so much more than that and it is so beneficial. And that's what I think people miss. They're not quite, I realize even I didn't know until I studied it a few years ago, how beneficial it is. It is on many different levels as far as regulating the nervous system. Um, I mean, gosh, it's yes. really important that we practice this, right? Yes, exactly. Yes. It's so important for our, our well being mm-hmm. to practice self-care and to practice it daily and to really prioritize ourselves and our self-care so that we can show up better for ourselves and then we can show up better for the people that are in our lives. Absolutely. And and that's such a good point because it's not just for us, it's for others. So when we are going through, and again, we're talking about holidays, but this is a year round thing really, but specifically around the holidays because our stress is so amped up. But I like what you said, we show up better for others. 
So we're not losing our temper so quickly. Maybe we're not getting as triggered. We are able to have more patience with others when we are practicing self-care. I think about self-care like, um, you know, filling up our gas tank or recharging a battery. Like that's why we practice self-care. So why do you think self-care is so important? Yeah, so if you if you think about all of the, what you just talked about, I mean, our self-care is really, you know, it's more than the bubble baths, the massages, the, the getting the pedicures, which all of those are great. But self-care is really about taking care of our needs on that physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual levels. Mm. And it's it's so important that we focus on it. You know, you think about when you're on the airplane and they talk about put your oxygen mask on first before mm -hmm. you before you help others. It's that same it's that same concept. Self care is actually critical to our overall well being. Ooh, that's a bold statement, and I'm going to say that I agree with you, really, truly. But talk about for a moment. What, and I've seen you on stages talk about this and you're brilliant when it comes to self-care because you go deeper again than traditional self-care. You talk about really almost a, a therapeutic self-care. Let's talk about that for a minute. Um, what does self-care look like? Yeah, so I think of self-care as, as when I think about self-care and what it looks like, I think about four things. Mm -hmm. So one is really that self-knowing. So really knowing who you are, what is important to you, what matters mm -hmm. to you, mm -hmm. you know, what are your values, your beliefs, and what I do in my self-care workshops is I actually take the time and have the participants to write down who they are. And what I do is I print their name in block letters and we do uh pencils and, and, and get creative and markers. And, and I say, write down who you are. And mm. it can be what you like. It can be, you know, who you are. I'm thoughtful. I'm kind. It can be, you know, things that you like to do. Anything about who you are. And I tell you what, there are instances, and that was, and this is me of several years ago, where they don't know. I was going to they, ask that. Yeah. Do people really even know? Yeah. They don't know who they are. And mm -hmm. so we start, we just start because it, it is a journey. So we just start with, okay, simple things. What do you like? You know, I like pizza. I like to go on hikes. You know, I like to read. Just start writing things down to start figuring out who you are. And what this helps us do is to understand who we are what's okay with us, what's not okay with us, and then we're able to set boundaries. So a big part of self-care is being able to set those boundaries, but we really have to know who we are first mm. and come from that solid place of knowing before we can actually then set, set boundaries. So that's, that's the first thing is really about knowing ourselves. I love that, Teresa. And, and and that was my first thought, like, because I remember having clients for so many years and, and I would ask them a similar question, like, let's talk about who you are. And people look at me like a deer in headlights, like, what yes. do you mean? And yes. and it's and it's okay. I want everyone to hear, like, it's okay if that's you listening right now. And you're like, well, shoot, I don't even know who I am. So I like how you're talking about starting at the basics. What yeah. would be some other things that, I mean, I'm thinking of like, um, you know, I like, to cook spaghetti and meatballs. And maybe that's the only thing you like to cook, write it down. Yeah. I like this. So make a list, do what she's saying, like go get a piece of paper and make a list of who are you? What are you all about? What do you like? What don't you like? What else? Give us some other examples of what people have written down in your classes. So they've written down characteristics about themselves. I am kind, mm -hmm. I am thoughtful. They've written down um, things like, I like lemonade. Um, you know, they've written down, I like to go to the beach. Um, I like to do yoga. Um, so, so it's just anything that you can think of that helps define who you are. And then they can get into values and, mm -hmm. and, and beliefs about, um, about themselves. So, you know, it, it's, it's, 
putting together all of those components Mm -hmm. into a picture of of who you are. Mm, I love that. Um, I would imagine too, when I think about people dropping into themselves and gaining some awareness around even things like, well, I'm thoughtful or I'm funny or I'm generous, I find, and I'm wondering what your experience has has been with this, but it's hard for us to claim those things. Yes. Yes. And I I think that, um, you know, you, you, you also have to, you know, you hear about a compliment when somebody compliments you, it's a reflection of you back to you. So I think it's being open to receiving Mm -hmm. and being open to, um, you know, without any judgment or without, you know, just, just try it on, just try it on and see how it feels and be open to it. And it may not be something that can happen right away, Mm -hmm. but, but over time, you know, you can begin to build more and more and more about who you are. It, mm-hmm. it is a journey. Yeah, for sure. So I want to just, I want to invite everyone to be really courageous about claiming those things within yourself because holy moly, it builds self-worth. Mm-hmm. And again, it's going to really help you to identify more of who you are and help you to identify what it is that is your version of self-care and, and what, what you need for, for, for yourself identifying our needs, I know is such a hard thing. Um, but this is a great way to begin. So what's the second thing? Yeah. So the second thing is around Mm self-awareness. So, um, awareness is key, right? We cannot change what we are not aware of. So Mm -hmm. becoming more self-aware about how you feel, um, noticing and checking in throughout the day when things happen, you know, how do I feel? Where do I maybe feel that in my, in my um, body? Mm -hmm. And really staying in tune to um, what's happening. And, and, you know, with awareness, I have one client in um, one of my uh, uh, participant in one of my self care workshops, Mm -hmm. and she's been working on her uh, awareness for a while. And it's kind of funny, because when we talk about it, and she she uncovers things that she's more aware of. She's like, well, because I have this awareness, you know, so it's almost <laughs> like it's this big thing and it yeah. can be at first, right? Yeah. It can be overwhelming as you start to tune into, you know, how am I feeling and, and bringing that awareness because we have all of these habitual response patterns that we've just been in right. for years and years and years that maybe developed when we were, you know, younger uh, so that we could feel safe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as we start to be bring awareness to that, it can be a little bit overwhelming. We can start to notice our triggers. I know, you know, you've talked about triggers a lot about triggers are a gift, Mm -hmm. um, but that's also part of that, that self-awareness. Yeah. And slowing down too is such, you know, for people that aren't self-aware, um, that are wanting to grow self-awareness, slow down because <laughs> yeah. you, you you're not you can't grab what's happening in the moment and raise your self-awareness if you're constantly in the future of the past so make sure you're slowing down and like Teresa's is saying like pay attention to what am I feeling what's going on inside you know all of those things beautiful I love that what's and the- having a lot of compassion and grace yes. for yourself like yes. really slowing down like you were saying and just pausing Mm -hmm. And, you know, I like to put my hand on my heart sometimes and just be like, okay, you know, and just take it in and pause and give yourself so much grace and compassion because Mm -hmm. it it is, you know, you're learning, you're building a new muscle Mm -hmm. and um, Mm -hmm. it's really important. Okay. Let me ask you this question. Do you find that the more you slow down and the more self-aware that you, the more you slow down, the more self-aware that, that you become. And then do you find that it keeps growing like that? I think about like self, self self-awareness, like we're looking through like a paper towel, paper towel holder, like that little tiny circle. And then the more we slow down, it's like, oh, I just became aware of that. Oh, I became aware that of this. And now I have a stomach ache. And I noticed that every time that, you know, my, that my mother-in-law calls, I get a knot in my stomach. I never noticed that till today. And now I'm noticing this. It's like, doesn't it keep growing? It does. Yeah, Yeah. it does. And that's where I think it can become 
you know, it can become overwhelming because it is a lot, but it's that yeah. giving yourself self that grace and compassion um, to, yeah. to work through it and to do some of these, you know, we'll talk about when we get into the, the, the techniques on, on self-care mm-hmm. is in the moment, you know, giving yourself what you need and practicing some of these uh, techniques, even if it's slowing down and breathing. Yes. Um, so. Love that. What's number three? What's the so, third thing? The next thing is really about self-accountability and Mm -hmm. really taking responsibility and ownership Mm -hmm. for your self-care. And, you know, really looking at one of the things we may do, I know I've done it, is we might blame others and we might give away our power, right? So it's really, you know, having that, knowing who yourself is, having that self-awareness, and then really taking ownership and responsibility for, for what's happening. And from that place, you can then, you know, we think about being in our healthy adult, mm-hmm. you can then choose right, and, and really take, you know, instead of giving it to somebody else from like a blaming perspective and giving away your power, it's like really taking it back, being responsible and accountable and making choices for you, the best choices for you. Let's, I'd love an example of what that means to give your power away. Cause some people may not even know what that looks like or what that feels like. Um, what do you think about that? How would yeah, someone so, know like, wow, I just gave away my power. I didn't even know it. Yeah. I think it's, you know, what I, you know, have experienced. And I think what some of my clients have experienced mm-hmm. is just blaming others. Yes. So if something is happening in your life and maybe you are um you know you're feeling stuck i'm trying to think of a of an example where maybe somebody's showing up for you in a certain way Mm -hmm. and you don't like it Mm -hmm. and you're blaming them for well if they would only just do this differently Mm -hmm. then everything would be okay and you're blaming and you're giving away your power because you're not taking responsibility and saying, okay, what is it that I want in, mm-hmm. from this situation? Mm-hmm. And what are the choices that I can make? Because you can stay mad at them and you're basically giving away your power and not taking action. Mm, I love that. Yeah. I think about two, tell me if this resonates, like even like giving, when we give away our power, sometimes we feel really small. And like you said, like, then we blame others instead of being like, hold on, you know, I'm going to take the reins of the horse in my hands. And even though it might not feel great, I'm just going to, I'm going to take responsibility and I'm holding on to my power here and uh, go on from there. Yeah. Because you might have to have a hard conversation. Yeah. You might have to set a boundary. And by taking that responsibility and having that courage to do yeah. that yeah. is really what's in the best, you know, the best interest of your, of yourself. Yeah. Your self-care. Agree. What's the fourth thing that we can do? What it, what it looks like. So really the fourth thing is about self-trust. Mm. So this is, is starting to um, prioritize yourself. And every day, I'm going to say daily, is mm-hmm. to really start ha- showing up for yourself, prioritizing you, and starting that self-care practice. So I w- would encourage the listeners here just to pick one thing, right, mm-hmm. and just start. And we're going to talk about things that are your minutes a day that you can do, but really building that self-trust and really prioritizing yourself and starting, starting mm-hmm. that self-care journey. I had this talk with myself just the other day because here in North Carolina, the temperatures have been like, like today it's 78, but last week it was high 40. Like, it's like, I don't know what's going on, but the day that it was high 40, I did not want to get out of bed and go for my early morning walk. Um, and as the temperature drops below 40, I really don't want to do it. But I real I had a talk with myself and I'm realizing I was doing this exactly what you're talking about. And I, it was like 6 15, it was dark. And I said, get up. I woke up and I heard this voice inside that said, Michelle, get up. And I was like, okay. And then I just did it. I just jumped out of bed. I got myself dressed and I'm walking down the street and it was like 630 in the morning and it's still dark out. And I thought, 
I'm doing this for me. And this feels really good because yes. every single time when I'm done with my morning hike, I come home and I'm like, gosh, I feel so great. It's just pushing against the ego and all the parts of me that just wants to stay in my warm bed. They're like, no, don't yes. do it. But, yes. but that was like, and I really sat there in that morning walk and I said, and I've, I've walked since I was 16 years old. I mean, it's just something I love to do and hike. And, um, I made that commitment to myself. So when I think about people listening, it's like, would that be something they can do? Like, what are you going to, what are you going to commit to for yourself? And I, I think, you know, especially women, men too, but women have a really hard time putting ourselves first. Yes. Really hard time. Yes. Right. Yeah, so there's an example of, um, we have friends that just, um, they had a, a baby about nine, eight or nine months ago. And, um, the husband, sweet couple put something on Facebook. What a great mother, you know, just all kinds of beautiful things about his wife. And one of the things was, and she hasn't slept in a year. Right. Was the, and, 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 and so it just wow. made me think about to, to what you're saying about women, yep. we tend to put others first. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's just an indication of um, how much we need self-care. Oh and yeah. How much we need to take care of ourselves. And um, you know, just an, just an example of, of yeah, no, like that's that. a great, that's phenomenal. <laughs> I and love the first that. thing I thought of was I have to get to her because she needs to start taking care of herself. <laughs> yeah. And, and that, and, and what a great example, because we don't think, huh, what do I need? It's more about what does the baby need? Yeah. What does okay. the kid need? What does my partner need? What does everyone else need? And I think that is, it seems to me, and I thank God where it feels like we're moving out of this. It's like a collective consciousness though, that women have been stuck in for so long. I mean, think about way, way back in the 19, early 1900s and 1950s, even all the commercials were like, you know, the woman's home with the apron on, you know, getting the dinner ready for the husband and the kids, you know, making the kids look all cute and you know, all that. It's like, thank God we're moving away from that. Not that that's a bad thing. Hear right. me now. Right. I stayed at home with my kids for the first few few years and it was amazing, but um, and I, I didn't sleep for the first five years. So I get the, de yeah. the sleep deprivation. And this, there's this sleep thing, but it's like, yeah, like we have prioritized and I'm saying the early 1900s and God knows even before then, but we, have, we, we've been just ingrained to put others first. Like, okay, well, what do you need? What do you need? Instead of hold on a second, what do I need? You yeah. know, if I haven't slept in a year, hello. I better be getting, you know, either my mother to come over, my sister, my cousin, my friend, my anybody, my husband, like, Hey, yeah. I need, I remember with Graham, it was like, I hadn't slept in like weeks on end too. And I was like, well, I'm breastfeeding. So I guess I'll just, you know, take the whole night shift. And finally I was like, this is ridiculous. And he even said, he goes, okay, you go down the hall and sleep you know, I'm going to, I'll be with our son also is Graham, but little Graham. And he said, and when we need you to breastfeed, I'll bring him down to you, but I want you to sleep. I was like, oh, thank God. But I yeah. also said, I need this. And he goes, I, I, I get it. I get it. Cause you know, he was working and I was like, well, I'm home for the first, first few weeks with him, but yeah, we've got to be willing to check in with ourselves to find yeah. out like, what do we need? Do you need a morning walk? Do you, do you need to go? And I don't know, like, what do you, do you need a nap? You know, I realized too, and I'm going to bust on my sister. She's always like, I don't nap. I don't nap. I don't need a nap. I'm like, take the damn nap. You need the nap. You know, like yeah. naps are like freaking phenomenal. I'm like a 20 minute nap is like sleeping for four hours for me. I'm like, I love a good nap. Um, but give, give yourself grace to do that. You know, go to yes. bed early. I've started to put, I, I feel like I'm a baby, but I put myself to bed earlier now. I'm like, I'm going to bed earlier because I'm going to get up at six. I'm going yes. to go to bed earlier. Great. Who yeah, cares? it's just, it's prioritizing you and it's showing up daily for yourself. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And speaking up for what you need, what exactly. do you need? And you've got to drop in yourself. Like we talked about, like what graze your awareness. Only, you know, what you need, you've got to speak up and get it because you're the only one that can make that happen. So, okay, cool. So let's come up. I, I know you've got, let's let Let's come up with some ideas. I know you've already got some five simple <laughs> techniques for us. Let's talk about those. Let's talk about those, especially, and let's talk about them 
in relationship to the holidays, but let's, let's hear, what do you have for people? So this, again, you guys, I want you to think of it's self-care, but therapeutic. So what we're doing with this is recalibrating and regulating the nervous system, which yes. gets so overstimulated during the holidays, right? Yeah, so we're going to bring it down. Flight, you're triggered. Yes. Yes. Right. Especially during the holidays. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's talk about some things that people can do. So the, the first thing is getting in nature. Yeah. So nature regulates our nervous system. So that can be, you know, going on a hike in the woods. It can be walking bare feet in the, in, in your backyard, in the grass. Mm -hmm. um, I live near a lake. And so I'm walking my dog down to the lake uh, several times a day. Yep you know, as part of, as part of my self-care, um, it can even be, but, but one thing that's important is really being present. So yeah. it's being mindful. It's using all of your five senses. What do you see? What do you hear? Do you feel the wind? It's really being present. Mm -hmm. And just by being in nature, it's, it's going to regulate and calm the nervous system. I'm so glad that you brought that up. When you're out, I have two, two, I want to add two things to that. When you're out doing your walk and anybody can get out there and do a walk, whether, even if you're not in nature, just get outside because you need that fresh yes. air and the, the fresh sunlight, air, the sun. yep. you know, <laughs> all of those things, right? I don't care if you live in New York city, get outside, go for a walk. But if you can find nature, of course, it's phenomenal. Um, but put the phone down. How many times, Teresa, you've probably done this. I've done this. And I, rarely, I, I, it's so funny. I read an article, like, I don't remember a few months ago and it was like something called like the silent walk. And it was this whole thing, like an article, like in the Huff Post or something. And it was this whole huge thing around walking without your phone or listening to anything. I'm like, is this actually a thing that like people have to talk about? Like, of course yeah. you should be doing this. Like put the phone down, put the podcast down, put the music down, put, don't call a friend because how many times have you gone for a walk? And you're talking on the phone all the time. Yep. And I come back from my walk or my hike. And I'm like, I don't even remember walking because I was right. so distracted by the phone call. That's not being in the moment. And that, what I realized, tell, I want your experience about this, but what I realized was I got, I'd get home and I'm like, I don't even feel like I walked like that did right. nothing right. for me. Nothing. Right. right? Yes. Yes. Horrible. It's really about the mindfulness and being present and being, and, and just, using those senses to really pull you into the moment. Yep. And looking out at your, at wherever you are walking, look around, listen, yep. you can then go ahead and smell. You can feel the coolness on your face or the sun on your, whatever it might be. Yes. Um, yes. The other thing I wanted to comment about, because I know that we're moving into the winter months and here's the thing, you guys, it doesn't matter if it's snowing because I grew up in Rochester, New York. And let me tell you something. I remember, yeah. I remember my mom and I, I have this memory of my father. I mean, this is my dad's been gone for 20 years, but I was a teenager. I was home with my mom and we used to walk every single day. I'd walk alone and then we'd walk together. And I remember walking at night and I remember my dad looking at the, we had a, uh, what's it called? A thermometer right on the wall, yeah. for snow, you know, and he looked at it and he goes, girls, it's 10 degrees outside. I said, yeah, we're walking and we're all bundled <laughs> up. The snow banks were taller than yeah. us. Like they were like 12 feet tall because we had so much snow and we still did it. And the crisp air, I mean, gosh, it was so great. So we still did it. So commit something to yourself, get outside, do that walk. Even if it's dark and you're in a snowbank, do it. Yeah. And I love the beach yep. and, and now I know why I love the beach for years oh God, and I've yes. gotten more into the self-care and yes. I realized that is why. I am just drawn to the beach. I love the mountains. I mean, I just, I feel different yep. when, I'm, when I'm there. I agree. I'm with you on that. All right, let's go to the next one. So the next one is, a, I'm calling it a five minute daily journaling practice. And I know you do your journaling challenge um, every year, which is fantastic. And this is really about um, focusing on what is going well. Mm. And I, you know, three things about what is going well, because what you focus on grows. It's just like when you buy a white Volkswagen Beetle yep. and then you drive around, that's all you see. 
It's, yep. it's the same car. So true. So true. <laughs> yeah. So it's just really about taking the time to journal on on what's working well and bringing bringing more of that. Um, I love that. Life. It's a brain dump. Like just look for what's going well and write it down. It can yes. be a list. It can be paragraphs. Don't worry about the grammar. Just write. I'm such a huge fan of journaling. What's the next one? So um, the next one is mindful therapeutic yoga. Mm. So um, I teach a uh, Vini yoga, which is focused on breath centered um, poses and breathing structure, structured uh, breath, which is mm. kind of the next thing is, is about breath, but it really combines the poses, which set you up mm-hmm. for the breath. And it's, mm. it's mindful, it's therapeutic, it's um, adapted to the person. And it's really about, it's not about the pose and nailing the pose. It's more about the person and relaxing and regulating the nervous system what's it called it's called vini yoga v-i-n-i yeah v-i-n-i i've never heard of it sounds yoga. amazing though okay yeah. and Great. yoga helps us to repattern those habitual response patterns and brings awareness mm-hmm. so that we can so show true. up in a healthier healthier way and that healthy adult i love that what's the next one um, the next one is an example of, of breath and breathing. So it's, it's really about um, when you, it's about the inhale, but it's also about elongating the exhale. So when we elongate the exhale, exhale, we're actually signaling to the nervous system that we are safe. Ooh, I love nervous that. system mm-hmm. into the yep. brain. So it actually yep. slows the heart down mm-hmm. and it, and it signals safety, um, safety to the body. I was just, and even doing like that deep exhale, like, ah, you know, for, it's so good for the vagus nerve and for yeah. <laughs> this nervous system. And I was in my closet this morning and I was looking at my clothes and I went, I was just doing that. And then Graham, I was like, Ah, and then Graham walked in behind me and he goes, oh, are you looking at your clothes? And you're like, damn, you got to go shop because I always say that I can't stand my clothes, you know, and yeah. he started, <laughs> and I said, no, actually I'm regulating my nervous system and stimulating my vagus nerve. Right. Thank you very much. And yeah. he started laughing. He's like, oh, I said, yeah. That's and you can do that without anybody really knowing that. Yeah. So if you're, if you're, you're triggered or you're, something is going on, you know, you can, inhale for four mm-hmm. pause for two and then exhale for six Love and that. you can do that you know two or three times and you will notice that um you're you're calmer mm. and you're, you're you'll just notice a difference yeah i love that okay cool what's the last one so the last one is tapping mm-hmm. or eft and that is um regulating the nervous system by tapping on uh acupoints mm-hmm. and uh i have been doing tapping for for several years mm-hmm. did it this morning mm-hmm. and it's um it's really about you know you start with tapping it on the side of your hand and then you have different tapping different points and it's really about thinking of a maybe something that's upsetting, maybe you have anxiety, Mm -hmm. rating it on a scale of one to 10, going through the tapping sequence, which Mm -hmm. typically you start out with, what are you feeling and allowing yourself to really feel it and process it in the body and then letting it go and bringing in um, what you want to feel. You know, Mm. if you're feeling anxious, maybe you want to release that, feel that anxiety, or maybe the sadness, feel that in your body as you're tapping yeah, and then yeah. bringing in that feeling of peace or calm, um, you know, through that, through that tapping sequence. And I, um, I like to use uh, tapping solutions as an app. They have yes. free offerings and paid yeah. offerings, but that's really, um, they have a wide variety of, of topics that, uh, that you can tap on. That's going to be really I super helpful and a huge part of, of my self-care and regulating the nervous system. I think I even have a, an EFT tapping video on my YouTube channel. 
Yes. It's, it's free. I think I have one on there. It's a two minute or so. And it just teaches you the very basics of tapping and how you can do it for yourself to honestly work on anything that's physical or emotional and just clear it out of your system. So I love tapping. All right, cool. Well, this is great. Thank you so much. And then again, to end, is there anything else you want to say? Because I'm thinking about, again, people going through the holidays, wondering what do I need to do in order to, again, maintain and balance my nervous system and keep it healthy. Um, I love these self-care tech, the techniques that you do. It's sort of like a, just a five-step process that you do every day to keep yourself in check. And do also remember that to pick something that you love, if you love to cook or create or bake or whatever the heck it is, or, or garden exactly. or knit or crochet or journal or whatever it is, make sure you are prioritizing that every single day throughout the holiday yeah. season, right? Is there anything yourself, else you can add? Yeah, yeah, I would just give yourself permission yes. to do that. Give yourself yes. permission to prioritize you. Mm -hmm. in, again, minutes a day yeah. and take the time, you know, take the time out of your day, prioritize you mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and, and do, like you said, you can do one of the five things we just talked about. Maybe you have a hobby, maybe you know, you love to paint or read or, or whatever it is that, um, that helps you to get in touch with yourself and to, and to really calm and regulate your nervous system. You've got to prioritize it though, without yes. a doubt, because this is what's going to recharge your battery and keep you in balance. So great. And you will notice ideas. the more that you do it, you will notice when you get out of balance and you'll say, oh, I need something. Yeah. And you get more in touch with what you need and when you need it. Um, and it becomes easier. Yes. And you've got to make sure that you're asking for what you need. You're worth it. We all yes. are. You've got to be willing to, to ask others for help and what you need. So such good stuff, Teresa. Thank you so much for today. Where would people find you and find out about what you've got going on? Yeah, so they can find me on my website at www.peacefulwellbeing.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those in the area, just north of Charlotte, I've got some in-person self-care workshops that are coming up. And then I also have in February a uh, retreat at the Art of Living Retreat Center in Boone, North Carolina, which is a beautiful retreat center. Mm -hmm. in the tranquil uh, Blue Ridge Mountains. And then I also am doing a uh, reduced stress and anxiety mm -hmm. yoga class on Wednesdays uh, at 5.30 to 6. So just a, a 30 minute class. I do that uh, every week virtually. Ooh, so that's something like an international crowd could join. Yes, yes. Yeah. How, how do they find out about that class and all the other classes? Is everything on your website? Yeah. Everything's on my website under services. Okay. And events. Awesome. Yeah, so the events are under the events page. And then I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching on um, self-care. So uh, yeah. Love it. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. This has been incredible your wealth of, of, of info. I appreciate you and all your knowledge with the uh, nervous system. And I know we only like touch the tip of the iceberg because again, I've seen you on stages talk and I'm like, dang, you know, a lot. So uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for joining us today and helping people maybe make their holidays a little bit easier. Yeah. Thank you, Michelle. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. I look forward to seeing you next week right here in the adult chair.